Um, so, uh, what I say, uh, the idea uh, of how to approach uh, the ideas uh, that we are all after uh, is um, having in mind and having read, therefore, Bion's background, particularly his history from India onwards, right, when at age eight he was moved um, to England all alone, away from his parents, uh, to do his schooling, and what happened from there on, right? His uh, military history in World War I, and then his history as an army psychiatrist in World War II. Because as you will see, and you probably already got a hint of that from Blandonu's uh, very good biography of Bion, is that, that nothing that Bion said or conceptualized is free from the charge that history had on him. And all his idea that came later um, uh, in writing in his book Learning from Experience has really to do f with his own life and himself having learned from the experience of life first and having then taken that to do his conceptual and theoretical word, um, work. Uh, that is why I wanted you to read all that prior to this first class. Uh, then what we we'll do, uh, we won't be able to go through the summary of the totality of his work, and I don't think we are going to get to the concept of O and so on, because that belongs to what Landonu calls the later Beyond, or the mystical Beyond, right? Um, we have six meetings in all, so if we get to um, but from experiences in groups to the theory of thinking, uh, and in the last class we can get a glimpse of an understanding of the grid, I would feel very satisfied and we could leave the, the later beyond for some later group at some later point. But that, I mean, if we go through that, um, hand in hand with Blandonu, who is always giving us a little bit of a historical background. Where was Bion when he was thinking of groups? What were his experiences that he then conceptualized? Where was he when he wrote the last chapter of Experiences in Groups? That is when he summarized it all after he had gone already into <coughs> analysis with Melanie Klein, how did that coalesce? And then we will see that there is a continuity between his thinking before he went into psychoanalysis uh, with Klein, but he was in analysis with some doctor, you read that, he, we never know who this doctor was, he only called it Dr. Fipp because this Dr. Fipp apparently, every time he said something, he said to him, find it in the past. <laughs> so, <laughs> he humorously called this psychoanalyst Dr. Fipp, although he never said who he was, right? Uh, probably not a very valuable experience for him, and it may be that yeah, that was some wild psychoanalyst to thought uh, in a Freudian way that everything that happens in the present is related to the past, so if you have anything that is happening to you with your analyst in the present, you have to find it in the past and that would be the cure. But then he went into analysis, as you read, with John Rickman, who um, had to interrupt the analysis um, when uh, the second war happened and he uh, became then his partner in his work in groups in the army and then he went into training with, <coughs> after that with Melanie Klein which was an entirely different experience. So we will see how each of these pieces, right, um, that is the group work which we're going to hopefully talk about today and then the psychotic period, um, Blandoli here or there called it 
beyond psychotic period, meaning the period where Bion wrote and was interested in experiences with psychosis. Um, we will spend some classes on that, some meetings on that, and then we will go to uh, Bion's um, version uh, of the Oedipal conflict, which is quite interesting and then to uh, the theory of thinking. And the theory of thinking that is what uh, Blandoni calls Beyond's epistemology, I think is the most original piece ever written in psychoanalysis by anyone, because psychoanalysis has lacked ever an epistemology. Psychoanalysis has more dealt with uh, illnesses, neurosis, psychosis, or all the range of psychopathology, but there is no consistent body of theory in psychoanalysis that tells us how do we learn to think and what are the deviations or the impairments of thinking that is proper uh, to the epistemology. Piaget wrote about epistemology, but that was not psychoanalytic. That was a different epistemology. So I think we really have to acknowledge Bion for having done that. And in so doing, I'm giving you here really a, a quick panoramic view of what we're going to do. Uh, in so doing, he took out psychoanalysis from the realm of uh, having to cure the ill into um, furthering the ability to think, right? Uh, of course, from there, one could look at neurosis or psychosis or the different ranges of psychopathology as, uh, let's say, varieties uh, of disorders of thought but it's about thinking and disorders of thinking, how we get to know, how do we unknow what we know, right? And uh, how can we help people to further thinking? In that re regard, you will see that psychoanalysis, and we had Caper uh, a week ago talk about that, you see, that psychoanalysis can leave up to psychiatry or psychiatrists who have to cure illnesses to devote itself to further thinking and to become therefore more a branch of education uh, or of, let's say, human culture than a branch of medicine that has to cure illnesses. Although, uh, and I think Caper was very right when he, he brought that last uh, week. It seems to happen that if you treat disorders of thought and you further thinking, the secondary effect of that is that very often it does cure illnesses in a very peculiar way. Only that that is not necessarily its central aim. Right? Now, that said, let's start with your impressions of what you read for today, that is chapter 5 and 6, right? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, one of the things that uh, uh, wasn't answered in there, and I was curious about, toward the end <coughs> when uh, Bion hypothesized that uh, having a group of individuals who've been psychoanalyzed or were in psychoanalysis uh, analysis would be would be different a different kind of group that would have the same um, I mean I this this the question is is he saying that this this group who's been psychoanalyzed wouldn't have those same uh, uh, Three, three troubles with, with pairing and uh, with fighting and flighting and uh, and uh, what was the first one? Dependency. Uh, subject, dependency, thank you, yeah. So is that, is that? I, I, I haven't read that piece. Oh. Uh, I, I, is that in here? Yeah, yeah, it's in, it's in uh, chapter six. six. Chapter six. Yeah. I, I, I must have overlooked it, probably because uh, 
I don't think that way, but anyway. Does he say that, literally? Well, he says he, 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 he kind of gave up the idea and left it to, uh, it, was, it was kind of vague, to an individual, what, in the future who might do that? Yeah, I remember him saying that he wondered whether a group of analyzed people yeah, yeah. would respond differently to those three basic assumptions. Ah, exactly. yeah, maybe they wouldn't get stuck in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. And then what would it be then about the analyzed person that would be... What would be different? ...different that they didn't get stuck in the right, right. dependency and the fighting and the right. antagonism? Right. Well, it's interesting that Blandoni would, would mention that. I don't think that, that Bion um, continued thinking that way after he entered the British Psychoanalytic Society and then when he came to California and found that the same mess that happened there happened here, that the psychoanalytic institutions are not any better than any other sort of institution. <laughs> yes, fully there, right? That it's part of the human nature and the nature of groups Right to have all these kinds of phenomena, and that, as he says, well, actually, I want you to say it. Oh, let us start with the basic assumptions. Yes. Then, what are the basic assumptions? There are a few concepts I want to make sure that we cover today. Right, not too many, but basic assumptions and the different basic assumptions. What they are, what the differences are between them. What is a work group? What are valences? You say valences or valences? I don't know. Valency. Valence, but yeah. Valency? Mm. In chemistry, valency. Okay. W w what are valences? Uh, what are, and Blandoni makes a little mistake there, where b uh, he calls what we call the specialized basic assumption groups, Blandoni calls them aberrant groups. Now, aberrant basic assumptions, Bion talks about that, but that's not the same as specialized groups, which is a different thing. But we're going to cover all that. So that and whatever else you're particularly interested in regarding <coughs> concepts, so as to make sure that we have a bit the, that we can cover the ground, the conceptual groundwork of what's being said in these two chapters before we move on. So, and this may not be accurate, Robert? but... Okay. Yes, yes. Hello? I, I would, well, yes, I was going to say something. Uh, in sure. terms of the specialized work group, he said something that I thought was quite interesting, which was um, that these work groups are likely to stimulate a certain basic assumption but that, um, that, that the basic assumption becomes dangerous if a, an attempt is made to um, translate it into action. So I, I was wondering about that. Um, uh, in terms of all basic assumptions, in the sense that, uh, can you hear me? There is some noise it's here. It's a static, huh? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, go ahead. It's better. Is that better? Yes. Yeah, so, so he seems to be saying something about how um, these anxieties get um, triggered in groups, and, but they're fantasies and they have to remain somewhat at a fantasy level, I think, is what I think. Because otherwise, if they're played out in action, they become dangerous to the group. Right. Uh -huh. uh, is that what he's saying? Well, uh, n not exactly, but let us see what the rest of the people think. You were about to say something, Jay. Well, uh, uh, you know, I think a lot in, in analogies, and the analogy, one of the analogies that was, uh, seemed to be in the background.